after I read that first diary entry, scribbled in a child's handwriting on a piece of loose leaf. I was spooked to say the least. I was actually holding a relic from a condemned insane asylum dating back all the way to 1918. I immediately ran to my computer. Surely there must be some kind of record of the patients put into care at King's Park. I know it was a hospital where patients were tortured and even killed, but there should be at least some semblance of record keeping. While I could find articles labeled King's Park patient records, I couldn't find an actual list of everyone who was under care there. Also, unfortunately, Florence Blackwell was a popular name, and Google searches of her name basically lead nowhere. I figured since my modern day technology was striking out, the only way out was through, and I had to read more of the diary to get anywhere. I will admit that I was scared. I'm still scared to leave through the whole thing, and I'm not reading farther than I really have to. I'm terrified for little Florence and what may have happened to her and the others in that ward, and the simultaneous screaming in the middle of the night. Something was up and I wasn't sure I really wanted to know what it was. But going back to the sense of camaraderie and duty that I felt while exploring King's Park in the first place, I felt that same sense of duty to Florence. Her story needs to be told, and her memory needs to be honored. So I kept reading. April 30, 1918 My name is Florence Blackwell or patient 724. I haven't written anything here in a while since I have just been so busy learning all the new things in this hospital. Mary comes to visit me every morning and gives me a little cup filled with four different pills. All these pills are pretty small and round and white, except for a really big one that she gives me. It's twice as big as the others and sometimes I accidentally cough it up when I try to swallow it. But Mary always helps me. She pets my head, gives me some water, and tells me to tilt my head back and try again. These pills always make me feel funny. It feels like my head is static on the radio. Mama always used to listen to the radio to see about the war and when Daddy was going to come home and sometimes the man on the radio would stop talking and there would just be a loud static noise coming from the radio. It was so loud Mama would scream a little if it scared her and run to the radio and turn it down so it didn't hurt my ears. I wish Mama could help me turn down the static in my head. After I get my pills in the morning, Mary brings me and my other roommate down to the main room for breakfast. This is always the scariest part of my day. There are people all over in wheelchairs, and some of them don't even know they're a person. At least that's what my roommate 698 says. 698 was the one who stared in my face that first night. She's been here for two months now, and she's almost 13. She wants to get out by her 13th birthday so her daddy can take her out for a soda like a teenager. The people in wheelchairs have no hair, and they stare out into space. I think they're looking at their imaginary friend, but 698 says they're not looking at anything at all. Sometimes a little drool falls out of their mouths and they don't even notice when it drips onto their laps. I had two roommates the first night I got to the hospital, but the other girl besides 698 was brought out of our room the next morning by two large men in white jackets. She looked really scared, but they grabbed her by both of her arms and dragged her away. I think she probably could have walked there, but they helped her anyway. That next morning at breakfast, my roommate was in a wheelchair staring out at nothing at all. She had a big bruise by her eyeball, but 698 said to look away and pretend we don't know her. The screaming keeps happening every night. I still don't know why everyone is screaming in the middle of the night. I am Florence Blackwell. I am 10 years old, 
and I miss my mama. I'm going to keep writing my name so I don't forget it since no one calls me that anymore. May 3rd, 1918. I am patient 724, or Florence Blackwell, and I will be 11 years old in exactly one month. I only know that because today is a special day. When Mary came to give me my pills this morning, she told me that today, May 3rd, we are going to have a special doctor come visit and help us. I hope that this doctor helps me most because I want to go home to Mama. I haven't gotten any letters from Mama or Daddy, but I hope Mama is alright. She had a couple of bruises on her face that she covered up with makeup before I left. She told me that she fell, but I hope she doesn't fall anymore when I'm not gone. I don't want her to get hurt. 698 and I made our way down to the main hall where the new doctor was going to be. I was pretty tired since the screaming lasted an extra long time last night, and early in the morning the two men in white jackets came to bring me back to that room where I got blasted with the water. This happens every couple of days, and I'm getting good at not falling anymore. I don't even cry when the water accidentally leaves a bruise on me. We got to the main hall and 698, and I sat down in the back while all the nurses and doctors were up front with the patients in the wheelchairs. There was a little stage set up, and a doctor had a patient in a chair in front of him. He said that his name was Dr. Freeman, and he came all the way from Pennsylvania to help us. Technically he's still in doctor school, he said, but I think he can be called doctor anyway. Dr. Freeman said he was sad to see all the patients like us being so sad and sick, and he created a way to help us get better. He said that he was the only one who has done it so far, but it will be very popular once he graduates from doctor school. Dr. Freeman used a bunch of big words that I don't know but I did hear one word I recognized, brain. After a big show of Dr. Freeman talking with big words, he took up a nice pick and moved to the head of the patient strapped down on the stage. In one motion, he shoved the ice pick into her eye and wiggled it around. I lost my breakfast right there and Mary had to bring me back to my room. But on the way back, all I could hear were screams and clapping. Dr. Freeman had made the patient better by hurting her. That doesn't make sense to me, but hopefully, I will find out what happened when I meet Dr. Freeman tomorrow. I will be 11 in one month exactly, and I hope Dr. Freeman can make me better soon so I can go home to my mama.